And you're just in time to see a rather different action replay of Ray Wilkins's goal for England in their rather uh, fraught one-all draw against England. There it goes. Brilliant goal. And all that from the memory of a computer. Well, actually, it's a five-a-side football game. We've each got a joystick on the control unit here, and that's to move our men. And this button here is for passing the ball and for tackling. You might wonder how one person can control the five men in each side. Well, that's one of the differences between this and a normal video game. You control one man and the computer analyses your tactics and decides if you're attacking or defending. It then musters the rest of your team, just like in a real match. Well, the best way is to demonstrate. To start, you first of all punch in the team names. And because I'm a gentleman, I'll go first. There we are, Kieran and... Judith, and we'll play for, well, let's say three minutes. Right, and up come the players. The computer decides who kicks off. We don't know ourselves. Ah, Judith's oh, got me. the ball. Good. Right, we'll go down a bit, so I hold the joystick down, and I move it to the left to go towards the goal. Oh, dear. There's a tackle. <laughs> oh, I've laid Judith out flat. <laughs> Free kick for me, and that thing you can see whizzing round shows you the direction to kick the ball. So kick, and it goes up to my man missed him. That can't have been easy, Judith. How do you manage that? <laughs> Goes into Judith's penalty area. Just like ordinary five-a-side football, the players aren't allowed to go into the area. Judith's just saved. Here we go. We'll have a goal kick. Missed your man. Oh, ah. I've got the ball now. Down we come. Lines up for the shot. Ah. Great. That was a great save. Now, come up on, there Judith. to my man. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> well, let's just have a look at that goal one more time. <laughs> Playing three-dimensional five-a-side television football, even the way they do it on a tiny home computer, is a fine example not of a technological advance, but of a new and ingenious way of using what's already available. And if I use the BBC's own artistic computer, I can demonstrate what I mean. Computer graphics, such as these letters, utilise what is really a pretty crude system. The screen is divided into many thousands of tiny squares. Each square can be white, black, or any of a dozen or so colours. Let's take a close look at the letter R. The picture, letter, or any other image is built up square by square. Our footballer might be made up of 30 squares contained in a particular block. This is how the computer remembers the character or the letter. But it can only move each character easily one whole block at a time. To move him smoothly across the screen would need many different intermediate characters and many hundreds of computer decisions. And of course there is a physical limit to the number of decisions that a small home computer has the capacity to handle within the time available. However, our new football match uses a computer that is no bigger than conventional video games because designers have developed a technique for treating one man not as one complete block but as one particular collection of squares which they call a sprite. Now a sprite can be moved not block by block, but as little as square by square, giving much smoother movement and many more variations without in any way complicating the computer operation. For instance, getting a man to cheer involves just one decision, change sprite. The birth of the sprite means that small computers will in future be able to generate very complex moving graphics and that's going to be a major step forward in teaching programs, design displays, anywhere. Computers need to illustrate results. Talking of results, how's it going? Judith's just laid me out flat but she's still getting a right pasting here. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of fun with this in the studio but then we haven't paid the thousand pounds or so that it could cost when it goes on sale. Oh, I don't know, though. Ten footballers for £1,000. Well, you know, it's not such a bad buy these days.